Last time we talked about drift current, which is current that occurs because an electric field has been applied. So when you put a voltage across a semiconductor, all of the charge carriers start to move under the electric force. There's another kind of current that we need to account for, and that's diffusion current, which is a current that occurs because the concentration of charge carriers is not uniform throughout the semiconductor. So if you, for example, have more electrons on the left side than on the right side, they will tend to move to the right side in order to even out the distribution. And that movement of those electrons is the diffusion current. And holes do the same thing. Let's deal with the equilibrium condition uh, right now, which, which is that there's no net current. So if I just had a piece of semiconductor sitting there all by itself, the drift and diffusion currents, if they're happening, have to add up to zero because the semiconductor will be in equilibrium. That's the condition for equilibrium, that there's no current. And so the drift and the diffusion current will be equal and opposite. Furthermore, electrons and holes do opposite things in drift current. Right? One goes to the left, one goes to the right. But for diffusion current, if uh, you have uh, gradients, they may be going to the left or to the right. So we have to actually enforce the equilibrium conditions separately for electrons and for holes. So the electron current, drift current density equals minus the electron diffusion current density and the same for holes. We can justify an expression for the diffusion current by looking at the form of Ohm's law I told you about the other day, that J equals sigma E to current density is the conductivity times the electric field. All current density is is charge flux, right? It's charge per unit area per unit time. So it's the flux of charge to, to the surface area. So we'll call that charge flux. And that equals a forcing function in the case of drift current, that forcing function is the electric field. And then the constant proportionality for drift current is the electrical conductivity, sigma. Now for diffusion current, we can follow this as a model and make a different kind of argument. First of all, why diffusion current happens is important. So this expression, j equals sigma e, depicts why drift current happens. It happens because there's an electric field. Diffusion current happens because there is a concentration gradient. So the diffusion current uh, density, J diff, so instead of having E electric field in it, will have the gradient of charge. You will write it as uh, something times the gradient of charge. Rho is the charge density, and D rho by dx is its gradient along the semiconductor. The constant of proportionality will be called D. Okay, so That's the diffusion current. Okay. Rho is carrier concentration times little q, where, where q is the charge, because carrier concentration is carriers per unit volume. So if you multiply that by coulombs of per carrier, you have coulombs per unit volume. All right, so this d, diffusion co coefficient, is going to be the uh, as important as sigma conductivity now. Here's a visual depiction of why diffusion happens. So imagine I have these 10 electrons organized like this, so that on the left side there are more of those electrons than on the right, and so they're, they're inside of some conductor, some solid material. The electrons, of course, don't like each other. They want to get as far apart from each other as possible. So clearly that, that arrangement is not going to last if you have, have space for those electrons to move into. The larger number of electrons on the left will diffuse over to the right so that you end up having the same number of electrons everywhere throughout. And so electrons will diffuse to the right, but you know when they do that, current goes to the left. So the current goes the opposite direction. And that's a little different than holes. So if I have a concentration gradient of holes in my semiconductor, more to the left than to the right, again, the holes will diffuse to the right, but the holes and the current go in the same direction. So the current will go in the, to the right as well. So there's, a, there's that difference between diffusion of electrons and diffusion of holes. So let's put these two expressions for diffusion current density together. First term is the electrons. The second term is the holes. Remember, there was a minus sign in my expression. So uh, replacing the charge with uh, plus or minus little q, 
gets rid of the minus sign for electrons. Just check this and make sure the signs make sense. So let's look at the second term, which is for holes. So in this picture up here, the concentration gradient is a negative number because as I go to the right, there are fewer of them. So dp by dx is negative. The charge is a positive number, q. The current goes to the right. So the negative signs cancel out. The, the negative sign then dp by dx cancels with this minus sign that's in the expression. So the, the signs work out. So that's the diffusion current density accounting for both hole diffusion and electron diffusion. So let's include also the idea of drift because both types of current are happening. So the total current density will be, is the drift current density plus the diffusion current density. So here's the expression for drift current density that we came up with previously. And now I'll just add in these terms for diffusion current density. That is the total current density. It's a mouthful, but it, it's all there. It's all happening. And we've got conductivity, uh, which is all this stuff multiplying the electric field. We have diffusion coefficient. Which there's a separate diffusion coefficient for electrons and for holes. They do diffuse differently. Electrons will diffuse more readily, actually, through a semiconductor than holes will. Together, these two current densities give the total current density. And together, then they describe what's the term that's used as carrier transport. Let's try an, an example that kind of puts numbers on things and shows you how, how you might use this. Take a minute and read this. If you do have electrons diffusing in silicon, the diffusion coefficient, big D sub n, is 36.4 centimeters squared per second or less. It can be can be less, but that, that's kind of an upper limit. And for, you know, uh, intrinsic silicon that that's what it will be in this particular situation we have an electron concentration gradient dn by dx of this number 2 times 10 to the 18th yep <laughs> the yup means yeah those units make sense right uh, dn by dx per cubic centimeter per centimeter you will probably write it as per centimeter to the fourth so what is the diffusion current j sub diff that's what we're going to find okay and there it is so we have the expression, we put in Q, Q is not negative 1.6 times 10 minus 19, Q is always positive 1.6 times 10 minus 19, put in the diffusion coefficient we were handed, and put in the concentration gradient that we were given. And there you go, you have a diffusion current density of 11.6 amps per square centimeter. This number, 36.4, is the diffusion coefficient for electrons in silicon. The diffusion coefficient for holes in silicon is, is one-third of that, 12 centimeters squared per second. By the way, that is the unit for, for diffusion coefficient, centimeters squared per second. So this is really important. When we get to LEDs in, in Chapter 4, we're going to see how this difference in diffusion coefficient, the fact that for holes it's considerably smaller than for electrons, enables the, the functioning of LEDs. And so that, that's coming up in Chapter 4. One last thing I want to leave you with that we're going to work on and in, in when we get to problem 2.9 as an example is that there is a relationship between the whole or electron mobility and the corresponding diffusion coefficient. This is called the Einstein relation. So the whole diffusion coefficient d sub p is kt over q times mu sub p, the whole mobility, and then the same for electrons. And that's a, an expression that you're going to find very useful in a lot of problems. That's why there's a box around it. It's actually very important. It's so important we will derive it coming up in a little bit here. I'll leave it at that. We're going to talk a little bit about non-equilibrium because here we assumed equilibrium. So next let's talk about being in non-equilibrium where you actually have current going through. And then we're going to do this uh, problem where we derive the Einstein relation.